Why are you crying? Are you hurt? It's my heart! It's the whole what thing! Show me. Show me your hand, Walter. <laughs> oh, monkey! Put your hands in the water. Don't be afraid. The water will wash them clean. If you believe. Yours faithfully, Emily Fitzalan Pride. Now, a letter to Dundas and Critchley, solicitors and commissioners for oaths. Dear Mr. Dundas, I agree that what is taking place at Porter Carrick, the report of which you sent to me, constitutes unwarranted commercial exploitation, for which permission has neither been sought nor given. I'll go, Miss Pride. It's from Porter Carrick. Shall I open it for you? Yes. Please, Miss Godwin. Thank you, Chief Inspector, for all your help. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't tell you this, but Cairo pronounced themselves more than satisfied. All part of the service, sir? Oh, by the way, I managed to intercept these before they were forwarded to the canal zone. Personal stuff. Oh, thank you, sir. Officially, you're with us till the end of the month, Alan. Do you want me to tell Scotland Yard that you're back? Uh, no. Damn fool idea, I agree. I have the report to write, sir. Well, I have promised someone I'd write it in um, congenial surroundings. Wise man. Go for a drink. Thank you. Whiskey? Please. My dear Roderick, I am writing to you on a matter of some gravity. The fact is, my life has been threatened. Last year, when my sister died, I inherited some property in Argyle, part of Porter Carrick Town, as well as the island lying off it in Carrick Loch. As an English landlord, I expected to inherit a certain Celtic resentment. However, of late, Resentment has turned into threat. I do believe someone in this idyllic backwater means to do me harm. Hello, 
Angus. All right, Sissy. Always something, Angus. All right. Always something. All right, a lump of a millet. Right, I'll be going over on the afternoon boat then, Major. I'll be back about five. She's coming here. Aye. Another damn ultimatum from London. She's coming here. She shouldn't come here. She's not welcome here. It's not going to make any difference to our plans. We'll still catch the train. I'll just pick you up at your aunt's in um, an hour or so. The train leaves at five. Who is this woman, anyway? Emily Pride. She was my instructor. Oh, yes. I owe her a great deal. She, well, she helped me during the war. I'm sure she did. She taught me colloquial French. And how many other women do you have tucked away in your past? Oh, last count. Mind you, not many of 65. Oh. Well, why the urgency? Her life's been threatened. Roderick. Where have you been? Shh. Three years ago, on Port of Carrick Island, some poor child had his warts cured by washing them in a pool there. Such cures are a known phenomenon. He also claims to have had a vision of a lady in green. Unfortunately, some press reporter got hold of it. The newspapers went to town, as you can imagine. Now the place is being commercialised, vulgarised, beyond belief. And I won't have it. Can you stop it? My solicitor tells me I can. I have no objection to people visiting the place in the superstition that they can be cured. What I object to is it's being sold to people as some sort of quasi-religious rite. Now look at this. Poems of Elspeth Cost. An ode to the Pixie Falls. Ye plashing falls, their secret own, iron and water, earth and stone. Pixie Falls. Ye gods. My sister tolerated such nonsense because she claimed the water cured her of her headaches. No doubt she believed it. She died six months after her cure, so she can hardly be claimed as one of its enduring triumphs, can she? Miss Emily. Miss Emily, please. How has your life been threatened? Well, this is the latest one. Do not meddle. Power to heal can flow backwards and kill. Have a cup of tea. There's something I want to show you. Good day, Miss Cost. I see the Major's had another letter. Aye. From London. Aye. The woman's coming here. Really? When? The day after tomorrow. That's what she says, anyway. I see. Then we'd better be ready for her, hadn't we? as we can only guess at any of the riddles surrounding the Celtic religion. We don't know. Why did you want me to see it? Because I take the past seriously. I value it. 
cult which is being cooked up at Porter Carrick is a pernicious fake. I won't have money being made out of people's gullibility. I won't. I can appreciate that, but you don't actually have to go to Porter Carrick, do you? Oh, yes, I do. But suppose this person really means to do you harm? I'm quite aware I should take steps to protect myself. What would be adequate protection? There's no such thing. I think a gun is the answer. What? You could obtain a permit for me and give me some instruction. I'm not going to fiddle a firearms license for you. And I'm certainly not going to teach you to be quick on the draw. Why not? Please, don't go. T. There's a simple solution to all this, of course. What's that? You could come with me. I'm sorry, I can't. Why not? I have a report to write. For someone who's not exactly disgraced himself in the intelligence service, you're very transparent sometimes, Roderick. Oh, am I? understandable, I suppose, that you prefer the youth and, no doubt, the beauty of this so-called report to the concerns of your old teacher, however serious they are. That's emotional blackmail, Miss Emily, on a former comrade in arms. Perhaps one is cruder where one's own concerns are at stake. The solution, as you say, is simple. Don't go. Let your lawyers deal with it, and then, when I get back, we'll go through their reports together and... Hammer out a plan. A long time now since you and I formulated plans. That would be nice. We'll do that then, shall we? I'd forgotten how persuasive you can be, Roderick. I must go. By the way, my report. She's called Agatha Troy, and, um, and she's an artist, and... I'm impressed. You must, of course, not let her down. I do have a report to write. Hmm. Footsteps of Girtin and Turner. Not working for you, watercolouring for me. When do we leave? 20 minutes ago. Mm. If you've managed to sort out your friend. I think I've done extremely well, considering she's the most stubborn woman in the whole universe. Apart from you, of course. He's not addressing his ruddy troops. Please. He's got so many responsibilities running this place. Oh, for God's sake, it's not my fault. It's not my father. 
You still in bed? Yes. Don't be so damn cheeky. What's the matter, Keith? It's that cost female. What about her? She's downstairs. Could you? Yes, of course. Bloody woman. So, you're agreed then, Mrs. Ballantyne. Council of War for the interested parties here this evening. Yes, about five o'clock. I'll tell Keith you know how involved he likes to feel. Yes, quite. Well, if you tell Major Ballantyne, I'll tell Dr. Nairn. Oh, have you seen the doctor? Yes. Just to check up. My asthma's gone. Pixie Falls, sort of that. Oh, good. Well, if you're sure. It's no bother. I make it my business to tell Dr. Neil. Your business? What isn't your business? <laughs> and a pernicious gossip just to be a meeting. Good. Well, I'll get on with my sermon. On what? Worshipping false idols. Aye, well, good. And no compromise, Alistair. Disappointed of two years in Paris hadn't rubbed off on me one way or another. <laughs> Come on. The boat leaves for the island in 20 minutes and it'll bring you back in the afternoon. I shall pray for you. Perhaps today will bring us another miracle. Perhaps. We don't expect. We only hope, Mr. McFarland. That is the voice of wisdom. Bless you. I shall pray for you all. You make sure those kitchens are fit for a sergeant to operate in, if you don't mind. Run along now. More pilgrims? Will that be the last of them? Aye, that's the question. She's coming here, Provost, from London. Every one of my guest houses depends on this damnable Englishwoman. She could close Porter Carrick down. It won't do, will it, Mr. McPherson? It won't. Meet him tonight at five. Because Miss Pride's coming. Not everybody's against her, surely. Nearly everyone. What about you, Sticker? Yeah, Good afternoon. You mustn't give an inch of this. The, the 
Travis of Porter Carrick. Come to defend commerce. That's it. I do hate it, you know, all this. Sherry, Mr. McPherson. Oh, yes, please. <gasps> Bloody rabbits. So, Miss Pride, she'll be staying here at my invitation. The question is what we say to her, what we present her with as a body. Right. Yes? Absolutely, yes. Good. So, as the whole thing began with a miracle, perhaps we should start with you, Minister. With me? Yes. Well, I think we'd all like to hear the fact that you don't deny the truth of these cures. You don't deny them, do you? No, I don't. I thank God for them. Good. Thank you, Minister. For them. For them in themselves. But it's, well, it's all the rest. All the, um, fiddle-faddle. The publicity and the subsequent commercialization. That's what Alistair objects to, quite frankly. And so do I. May I ask a question, Mr. Cruikshank? Please. Our Lord performed miracles, did he not? Yes. Did he perform them out of the sight of other men? Was he ashamed of them? No. On one celebrated occasion, more than 5,000 people were present. The Gospel writers wrote about them. Publicity, you see. What? I have been plagued with asthma most of my life. And now I'm cured. Why should others not benefit? Why should we not spread the word? Oh, no, I'm sorry, but no. It won't wash, Mr. McPherson. Oh, won't it? Our Lord did not set up turnstiles. It didn't sell 5,000 brass tokens to people to go and collect their bread and fish. Besides which... Yes? Oh, it doesn't matter. What were you going to say? No, oh, never mind, never mind. I'm sorry, Mr. McPherson, but there it is. I don't think you can take that line. No, oh, can't I? This is the livelihood of the people of Porter Carrick I'm talking about. Exactly. And very laudable, I'm sure. Just don't bring God into it, if you don't mind. All right, all right. Now, where have we got to so far? Dr. Nairn, what does a man of science say? Uh, I'm keeping out of this. Oh. Oh, that's very helpful. Come off the fence. Are they cures or are they not cures? Major, if you want answers, ask the patients. If they feel better, fine. A remission of symptoms, fine. Cures are more difficult, I'm afraid. My God. I am cured. For 30 years I've suffered. You examine me yourself this afternoon, Dr. Nairn. Clear as a bell. Come along, Doctor. You said so. Uh, there has been a significant remission, certainly. In other words, a miracle. Bloody jargon.
回击他。I've never seen you relax before. <laughs> Mr. Allen, excuse me, there's a telephone call for you. She's gone to Scotland, to Porta Carrick, by herself. From what she told me, I felt sure that you thought she wouldn't. Wouldn't you care for someone to accompany you, surely? Certainly not. I shall, however, require admission to the enclosure. Of course, of course. Tokens. No, 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 that's not necessary. Please, take as many as you like. I should like seven, please. There's seven shillings. No, it's not necessary. I would be obliged if you would take the money. Thank you. I hope you walk over a bloody cliff. Oh, God. Oh, God. Costs just slipped out for a minute. Oh, there she is now. This is surely hell itself. Oh, Sissy, I've just finished the costumes for. You have my letter, Miss Cost. Yes, Miss Pride. You understand it? Of course. Your lease is due for renewal when? In three months. Well, you may have it again and on the same terms, provided all this goes. That is to say, anything which advertises the supposed properties of the water in the pool. My work has been praised in discriminating quarters, you know as a worthy continuance of the folk art tradition. That is not the point. It gives a lot of pleasure. I dare say. Especially to the ailing. None of this is at issue. My work has been conceived in a spirit of reverence. And you sell it. You do, don't you? Yes, but... Then you are advertising the waters and profiting from it. And that 
is the point. But I myself am a living witness. Perhaps. And when the island is restored to its natural condition, nobody will be prevented from visiting the little glen. I am, however, concerned with the commercial exploitation of people's belief. I won't have it. Is that understood? Yes. Huh. This festival of yours. You can't stop us. Pixie Falls ground is sacred ground. You be careful. You can't prevent people celebrating. You can't prevent them. Besides, we have permission. The provost. We have hundreds of people. <laughs> hundreds of people coming. You wicked woman. Can I do anything for no. you? Can I do anything? No, I think it's best that you leave her now. You may have your festival. It will be the last. But you may have it. This is the first time we've managed a few days together without something else rumbling along in the background. Then since you've had that phone call, it's been the same as ever. You've been like Jeremiah with a toothache. I'm sorry. I just can't get out of my head that she might be in some sort of danger. From what you've been telling me, it sounds as if she's been in danger all her life. She probably enjoys it. She's never asked for help before. She asked for advice. You gave it. She ignored it. Good night.
rather badly shaken up. Uh, some bruising, concussion is a possibility, strongly denied by Miss Pride, I may say. Uh, these things can be dangerous in her age. You're never quite sure what you might initiate. But she is an appalling patient, so she'll probably be fine. She has been quite awkward, actually. <laughs> it takes vitality to be that difficult. And practice. <laughs> I can teach. Well, I'll, I'll call and see her again this afternoon. Thank you for looking after her. It's been an education. Old lady better, is she? <laughs> I'm sure everyone will be very relieved to hear that. She's no a popular woman, but I'm sure no one wishes her bodily harm. Naturally, I'm glad you're here, Roderick, and I am delighted to meet the celebrated Miss Troy at last. Of course I am, but I still don't see why this trolley business should be considered so sinister. It's probably an accident. How could you possibly know that? You were warned it might happen. Well, nothing much has happened, and everyone's making such a fuss. Well, I dare say it was a bit fussy of me coming all this way. Perhaps I'll go back, shall I? made him angry. Yes, I think you have. He's not tremendously fond of overnight sleepers. Nor indeed am I. I didn't mean he was making a fuss. Or you. It was just everyone else. Well, I'm not going back to bed. Will he insist I go back to bed? I think he just wants you to take his advice, that's all. Well, men always do. But I've got to a reasonably advanced age by ignoring most of it. And you haven't got to be doing what you do by taking men's advice, have you? All I said was I think he looks too nice to be a policeman. What on earth's the matter with you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I've got room and law to learn. Was it something I said? Everyone's a bit on edge, I think. You're telling me. Oh, um, I telephoned to the doctor, by the way, and he's very happy to let Miss Troy have the cottage. Oh, thank you. Hello, Dulcie. Jenny. Oh, you'll be Mr. Allen. How do you do? I'm Dulcie Cruikshank. The minister is my husband. Pleased to meet you. How's the patient? Impossible. <laughs> Good for her. That's the spirit. Ugh. Festival of the Waters. I take it we disapprove. Disapprove? The wretched Miss Cost is having a rehearsal this afternoon for this heretical rubbish. Will you be going? Certainly. So will Alistair. We want to know what tune the devil is playing. Good morning. I think I persuaded her she shouldn't leave her room. That's impressive. Uh, uh, Miss Williams thinks she's found a cottage for you. How nice. Well, this is something of an experiment for us. We've not let the old cottage before, so don't be shy telling us of any inadequacy, will you? I'll try to be bold. <laughs> Excellent. You found Miss Pride in good spirits. Very defiant. Uh-huh. Now, personally, I welcome her visit simply on aesthetic grounds. I think what they've done to the island is a disaster. Let alone the dubious morality of selling hope to the afflicted. Just hope it was wise of her to come. So, you're convinced it was an accident? Then look, it is an absolute rule the trolley is chalked up when not in use. Now, I can institute safety procedures. It takes one pea-brained idiot to balls things up. It doesn't look like an accident to me, Major. You're a bit posh for a copper, aren't you? I've met your type before. Swanky armoured regiments, thinking they're cavalry with horses still. I'm still a copper. 
Yes. I really don't think this is a good idea. Please, Miss Troy, I am perfectly capable. Ah, Mrs. Ballantyne, I would appreciate it if you could find me an old cushion. Oh, yes, of course, Miss Pride. One doesn't know how long this rehearsal of Miss Costs might last. Alistair. Hello. Young Mrs. MacDonald, is it? Aye, she's due in the yard now. I'll have a new member of your cook by tomorrow morning. There's <laughs> your man from Scotland Yard. Superintendent Campbell. Roger Campbell. I got your message, Chief Inspector. Sir, you understand, I'm... I'm only here as an old friend, Miss Emily. Ah, uh, very tactful, Chief Inspector. Thank you. Needed to be said, I expect. Now you said it. Yes, sir. And, uh... Miss Pride's accident. No accident, you think? Sir, I tried the trolley. Somebody must have aimed at her. Mm-hmm. Any idea who might have done it? Alistair, if the wretched woman is going to be practicing sacrilege, of course you've got to be here. Oh, Jiminy. You have to see what she's intending to do. It's her going on about illicit sex and the hair that I can't bear. What am I supposed to do about that? Oh. Mind what you do with that sword, James. Right, Walter, you know what to do with that. That's right. Caution. Thank you. Sissy, we're ready to start now. Tell him. Wally. Walter. Wally. You can do the music now. In the sorrow of my disfigurement. To the fall, his steps he bent. To the falls, my steps are bent. There to cool his sorrow's fever, as he knelt beside the river. There to cool my sorrow's fever, as I knelt beside the river. Neil Walter. Be not afeard, said the lady. Be not afeard, said the lady. Bright she was and pure. Lave your hands in yonder water, and will effect a cure. So, in the sparkling waters blessed, I washed my poor, warty skin. When I woke from night's sweet rest, gone was my disfiguring.
barbarians! Filthy barbarians! This is sacred ground! You defile it with your presence! Your filthy practices will be punished! Believe me! I... will punish you! I'll be just down the corridor. That is quite unnecessary. Nevertheless, that's where I'll be. You still think I shouldn't have come, don't you? You think this is some whim, don't you? How little you know me. It is much, much more. Good night, Miss Emily. Good night. <sighs> oh, dear. And you've still got a report to write. That reminds me. What? Oh, nothing much. Ah. For you. From Egypt. Thank you. Well, I can't go to Egypt and come back without a dung beetle. No? Dung beetle gets a very small piece of dung, rolls it up a slope, lets it roll down again until it's a perfect sphere. The ancient Egyptians thought there was a great dung beetle in the sky doing the same thing to the sun every day. How entirely reasonable. A scarab, you mean? Oh, Rory, it's beautiful.
Superintendent. I found her out there. All I've done is dragged her out of the water. I never thought anybody would be mad enough to take it this far. So it's happened. Miss Pride. No. My God. Old cost. so angry. I ask you not to come up here in the first place. I ask you to take the most basic precautions. You ignore me. But here I am. I slipped out to put up a notice, that's all. Then I went for a walk. All is well. All is not well. Someone's been killed. What? Who? Miss Cost. And what's more, she was almost certainly killed because she was mistaken for you. A direct result of your most Incredible obstinacy. Yes, I see. Well, you've made that very clear. about. Inspector was only asking me to look after Miss Pride. I made no promises. I knew that. It's not that. So what is it? Opus Cost is dead. That's what he told me. They think she was murdered, you know. How do you know? Oh my God, everything's such a mess. What is? I tell you, it scares me rigid to think what... What? I don't know. I don't know. That's the trouble or guesswork. <laughs> Here I am. Rules of evidence. Teaching myself to respect evidence. Evidence for what? There's, there's no evidence. Forget it. it it's nothing. O overactive adolescent mind, probably. Sorry. Up there. Oh, we'd better not confuse the ground any further. Sorry! We shouldn't be tramping about up here. No, I suppose not. Sir! Possible murder weapon? Right to see you, man. Right to see you, man. Did you throw a stone at Miss Pride? It's a secret. Notice is given that the owner of this property wishes to disassociate herself from any claims that may have been made for curative properties of the spring. She also gives notice that the property will be restored to its natural state. She's not scared of sticking her neck out, is she? She could teach a giraffe, believe me. 
Mind you, it just confirms what we've both been thinking, doesn't it? Hmm? Well, that somebody might have thought that Miss Pride was standing under that umbrella, not Miss Cost at all. Oh, yes. Yeah. When did you put this up, do you think? This morning, somebody tore it down. <gasps> the beads! She... She must have come up here to get her glass beads. What's the matter, lass? She lent them to me to represent the waters. I hadn't a dropped them yesterday. Well, none of this would have happened, would it? Oh, I'll drop by. See you later on. Thank you. Doctor? Any thoughts on time of death? Oh. 8.15. Look, I saw Miss Cost earlier. She was headed up this way, presumably, from the shop. When was this? Well, it'd be about 7 o'clock. I was on my way over to young Mrs. McDonald. She was having her baby. It was a nice, easy home delivery. I was hardly needed. Did you see Miss Cost again? Uh, no, no. I finished the McDonald's at 7.30, went back to Port Carrick. Did you see anybody else? Mm-hmm. There was the McNabb boy, Wally, of the Miracle. He was running around pretending to be an aeroplane, as far as I remember. Do you have any idea, Doctor, uh, professionally, on Wally? Oh, well, I'm not qualified, but, uh... No, sorry. I'm not qualified. Uh, what would happen to him, do you think, if he... Don't even be held responsible for his actions. That's not a professional opinion either, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, I do understand your frustration, but the police are investigating something very serious. The leading member of the community has been killed, and until the police have finished their inspection of the site, well, I'm afraid it's... So what's happened, you know? No. It's only that she's been killed. Patrick said you'd spoken to the police. Not really. Is he all right? We'll try and make arrangements what a horrible business. What a wretched, horrible business. I hope you will be with us. And thank you very much. I heard nothing in the night. Nothing. I've always slept well. Nothing has ever disturbed my sleep or spoilt my appetite. You haven't forgiven me, have you, Roderick? No. Why not? Why don't you tell me the real reason why you came up here? My sister. It was my sister. She was cruelly exploited. She was an innocent, you know, she was a good person. I was simply clever. How was she exploited? She had a malignancy, which was operable. She came here. That ridiculous cost woman persuaded her to stay stuffed her head with nonsense about the pool. By the time she returned to London, her condition was no longer operable. Miss Cost filled her with false hope. She killed my sister. I'm not sorry she's dead. You'd better not express that opinion anywhere else. I'm prepared. Shout it from the rooftops. No, please don't. They hate me. Yes, I'm afraid they do. I'm still determined to stop it. No one is going to profit from another tragedy such as my sister's. You're a very brave woman. That's why some of us love you. I want you to do something for me. I don't want you to leave this room. Promise.
please don't let anyone into her room. Anyone. Unless it's me, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, Troy will relieve you later. Okay, it's fine. Thank you. Inspector Fox. That's right. Welcome to Bonnie Scotland. <laughs> Chief Inspector, I've done something dreadful, I'm afraid. I've locked her in. Well, she appears to be trying to smash her way out. Mr. Allen is putting you in protective custody, ma'am. He says, uh, begging your pardon, ma'am, that you were the best teacher he ever had, and he doesn't want to have your death on his conscience. And what's more, I don't want him to have your death on his conscience. Uh, this is uh, Constable Mingis. He has strict instructions from Mr. Allen as to what you may or may not do. Good evening, ma'am. Lover's Hollow. You could say it has connections with the victim. Really? You surprised me. I could show you the station logbook. Miss Cost was always complaining about disgusting behaviour. The lads at the station called her old mother never had it. Sir! Sir! Excuse me. Excellent. I wonder what he was doing here. Who was that? The tippling major from the hotel. Smokes those like a chimney. Perhaps that hoof print will confirm it. I'll take a cast of that. Good man. I'll leave you to it. Williams? I think Wally will have told Miss Troy the truth. He's a very literal boy, and not devious. Something's troubling him, though. God. What, Miss? Wally were involved. Just thinking what a pointless mess it would be. His life's blighted enough as it is. Well, he can't be ruled out on those grounds, I'm afraid. Let's assume, just for the moment, that Miss Pride was the intended victim, not Miss Cost. Now, where does that lead us? Miss Pride threatens to close the pool. Now, whose livelihood is affected? Well, first of all, I suppose the 
the Ballantines, the major, wife, stepson. They appear to have put their life savings into this um, pile. Um, who else? Dr. Nairn. He runs a private nursing home. He must benefit from these boatloads of invalids. Well, nearly all the tradesmen were doing well from these visitors. Aye. Macpherson's coining it in. He's got three guest houses and a chippy. What about the McNabs? Wally and his father. I'd say they have a very great deal to lose. Uh, Miss Troy was able to befriend young Wally this afternoon. Now, Wally admitted he was on the hillside early this morning, and that was confirmed by Dr Nairn's sighting of him. Wally says that he didn't see Miss Coss, but says that he did see Miss Pride. He also admitted to throwing a stone at Miss Pride. He says, however, it was uh, the other day, and it was uh, a wee yin which didn't hit her, whatever that means. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. This word was cut out of the front page of last week's Sporting Chronicle. What it said was, uh, death of favourite at air. Good. with Miss Cost. She was an interfering busybody. Lonely people often are. <laughs> Lonely? You didn't know Miss Cost. Mrs. Ballantyne, I think there are a lot of lonely people on this island. I was just thinking that perhaps Miss Cost invented the story of the Green Lady, embroidered it, if you like, because she was lonely to give her life some meaning. I always thought it was a lot of old damn nonsense. Oh, the cult was nonsense, of course, but the green lady was real. Wallace, a simple lad, he tells the truth. She wore a green dress and she was beautiful. It was you, wasn't it? <laughs> Patrick thinks it's me that's changed, but it's not. It's everything. I mean, look at him now. He and Margaret used to be so thoroughly sane and nice. They really did. I think they took on too much with this place, you know. Mother, anything would have been better than this. I know what's going on. I'm not blind. Do you think I'm the first woman to get tired of being pushed around by a drunk? Well, who made him into a drunk? Well, not me. I didn't want it to happen. It was that stupid woman. That poor, stupid woman. Miss Cost. Do you want to know what made him into a drunk? His conscience. His own guilty conscience. So.
yesterday morning. The morning Miss Cost was killed. Oh, in bed. Awful night. Much consumed. Uh, rabbits. Do you have a license for that? What? You need a firearms license. Oh, it's my pistol service issue. I know that, but the war's over, Major. You'd better get one. Yes. Yes, of course. You smoke a great deal, don't you? Mm. Be careful, one. Thank you. I'll tell you something. I thought of joining the police when I left my regiment. Ah. Took up this damn poodle faking instead. Well, there you are. Listen, old boy, I... I feel I ought to warn you what they're saying. They? In the cottages down in Porter Carrick. Not that I agree, necessarily. What are they saying? The two women hated each other. Old Cost and Miss Pride. Miss Pride was there. Probably blames Cost for her sister's death. That's what they say. Can't get away from it. She was there on the spot. Hanging up a damn notice. Well, you should know. You were there too. Put it to you that you did. Absolutely not. Are you calling me a liar? What were your relations with Miss Cost? Who the hell do you think you are? Sticking your nose in like some bum sniffing dog? Well, that certainly gives me some sort of answer. Oh, does it just? You a sporting man, Major? Yes. And I see you take the Sporting Chronicle. wife's idea, Chief Inspector. Don't be so wet, Alistair. Tell him. Well, it's about Miss Cost. But I'm sure you've found out for yourself, Inspector. She was a... You see... She set her cap at every man of her age and class in the district, including Alistair. Oh, I don't know about that. I do. I saw her off. Then, Dr. Nairn gave her short shrift. After that, she tried an accountant on holiday from Dunfermline. I believe our local librarian even was honored with some attention. Did she succeed with anyone? We think she may have. Oh, Dorsey. Alistair, she's been killed. It's important. We think she had an understanding with the Major. I understand it. But that's not the point. The point is the way she was obsessed with sex. She was always complaining to me about people making love up there in the heather. She'd quote time, date, place. She quoted times? Oh, yes. She went looking for them. She was a voyeuse. She collected them.
Inspector Allen. I have that uh, post-mortem report for you. Thank you. Any surprises? Uh, no, 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 not really. Time of death? 8, 8.15. Pretty much as you thought. By the way, would you say Miss Cost was sexually obsessed? Well, that was certainly her reputation. I know this is difficult because he's probably a patient of yours, but exactly what time did you see Wally playing aeroplanes? Uh, 7.45. I was back on the mainland by 8 o'clock. It would have been about quarter to. Asphyxiation following cranial injury. Sir, can I have a word with you for half a minute? Excuse me. I found the key to it hanging from one of the bed springs. Now, the uh, first two and a half are proper diaries. But in the third... Now, just look. I'm very cryptic. Times, dates, initials. Looks like a game book and a hunting lodge. And in this instant, the game was courting couples. Well, she didn't just write about them. She took their pictures as well. Crikey. <laughs> Lover's Hollow. Any distinguishing features? Well, you have to be a foot fetishist to recognise this one. Bailey, that last diary. When does it end? Last month. Last month. So was there a later one? Is that what they were after? Could anybody have found that? I can't see how, sir. No sign of any forcing or even trying. Anyway, might not take the lot. Exactly. So, if the intruder hasn't got it, where the hell is it? the hotel followed by major ballantyne 725 miss emily hangs up her notice at the enclosure major ballantyne hides behind rock morning try 730 gone brad 730 miss emily leaves major removes notice chucking it in the mud Still 7.30, Mrs. Dulcie Crookshank arrives at McDonald's Cottage to assist at birth. 7.35, Major Ballantyne returns to hotel. So he says. In brackets, own account. Close brackets. Still 7.35, Dr. Nairn comes out of McDonald's Cottage. He sees Wally McNabb. 7.45, Dr. Nairn heads back to the mainland. Arrives 8 o'clock. Still 8 o'clock, Mrs. Crookshank leaves McDonald's cottage and heads for hotel. All right, we start here, sir. The diary. It's in the post. The damn thing's in the post. May I? Rory, those timings, they don't make sense. hotel tonight. He kept looking at me. He stared at my ankles. I was sitting above the falls. I was feeling the magic of the water. And then she came out from behind a boulder in a green dress. I could hear a man laughing. I couldn't see him, 
But I knew. I knew all the wicked desecration of it. I am shocked, horrified and sickened by what I've seen this evening. My hand shakes, but I must write it down. At last, I shall speak. I shall tell her he could have loved me. make them suffer. I shall drag their names through the mire. I shall send this to the proper authorities. Now, tonight, I am determined. This is the end. are so stupid. Do you know what they're saying now? The latest money is that Miss Pride took a lump of rock to Miss Cost. I think the latest money's in for something of a surprise. Hello, Dulcie. Oh, hello. I promised Miss Emily to return match. Two sessions in one day. You're a glutton for punishment. Well, I enjoy a good opponent. Do you need fortifying? Maybe I do. She's terrific. Rory. Enter. Yes, Roderick? Miss Emily, I owe you an apology. You do? Why? Miss Cost wasn't killed because she was mistaken for you. She was killed because... Um, because she was Miss Cost. These are private premises. Get out! Not just yet, Major. Patrick, you're a lawyer. Hardly. Would you say that this fight is connected in any way with the death of Miss Cost? Patrick, how can it be? Perhaps that's a question that I should properly put to the Major. What the hell do you mean? You're saying I did away with Elspeth Cost? First things first, Major. I'm saying it was you who threatened Miss Emily Pride, you who caused her grievous bodily harm, and you who followed her to the falls that morning, didn't you? I was in the bar. Tell him. Smoke too much, Major. Cheroots at breakfast time. You were at the falls, no question. But did you go to kill Miss Emily? Or did you go to kill Miss Cost? You were better than I thought. It doesn't seem to be any way out, does there? I thought this was all about plain, straightforward greed. A stubborn old lady who nearly got killed because she dared to stand up to greed and grasping vulgarity. Well, there was greed, of course, but there was also good old-fashioned lust. And Miss Cost, I'm afraid, was consumed by it. Wasn't she, Major? I didn't touch her. But you met her that morning, didn't you? She'd gone to collect her beads from the floors, and she confronted you, hmm? A lonely, bitter woman whom you had cast aside. Perhaps she provoked you. Told you things about your wife you'd rather not have known. Walked away. She was ranting. I 
didn't touch her. No, you didn't. No, the man who killed her was the man she was in love with. Obsessed with. The man she followed. Spied on. The man she grew to hate because she watched him commit adultery with another woman. You think this has some bearing on the death of Miss Cost? Mrs. Ballantyne. Miss Cost was killed because she threatened to expose the lover of the Green Lady. Rejected, Mark, she turned on the man she loved. She would ruin him professionally. She had times, dates, photographs. She put them in the post to the General Medical Council. She told you what she meant to do. So you followed her to the falls and you killed her. possible. She died between 8 and 8.15. I left the island at 7.45 back on the mainland by 8 o'clock. Uh, Troy, could you tell us please exactly when you saw the doctor on the morning of the murder? I was doing a watercolour. I'd set up by the quayside. I'd just laid a wash on and I knew I had 10 minutes before it dried. I heard the clock check my watch. It was 8.30. That's when I saw you return. Well, she can't have seen me at all. She had a back to me. Oh, yes, I did. I saw you reflected in the windscreen of a parked van. It was 8.30, exactly. 8.30, Doctor. It's half an hour on the island, unadmitted, unaccounted for. He was with me. He was with me! I'm sorry. than it already is. Don't come any closer. Come along now, Doctor. I mean it, Alan. I'm not convinced I should have come here at all. I think perhaps I should have done it all through my solicitors. What do you think? Um... Mm. Well, of course, I did get one thing right. Who would want to kill me? <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Troy. And thank you so much. Now, Roderick, are you sure you won't accompany me back to London? I can't, Miss Emily. 
I still have that report to write, and um, Superintendent Campbell has asked me to stay. Did the superintendent really ask you to stay? Did I say superintendent? Can't think what came over me. Must have been someone else I meant. Ah. Well, I'd like to stay on. But I don't expect you to. I don't expect you to do anything. Oh. I know you don't. I think that's one of the many reasons why um, 